So in terms of conversational AI and, and what is conversational AI, I, I pulled a bunch of stuff, content here off the, off the internet. I pulled some people. I pulled my mom. I pulled my wife. Um, <clears throat> of course, they were in, a, in, a, in opposition. You know, my mom thinks Siri is, uh, is conversational AI, and my wife is like, no, it's absolutely Alexa. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Oracle has to say a couple of interesting things there in the bottom left, in the orange, um, and it's talking about the chatbot at its most basic level. Um, and I, li I do like the Oxford language as one in the upper left-hand corner, uh, especially the, la the latter part of that where it says chatbots often treat conversations like they're a game of tennis, talk, reply, talk, reply, which is I find hilarious because that's, that's so true. Um, <clears throat> if you'll notice one common thread uh, through most of them is that they say that a, a chatbot or a, a conversational AI uh, tries to be or emulates or, you know, acts in lieu of a human, um, which is kind of interesting because I think at the beginning that was kind of the goal is, and, and there were a lot of chatbots that were deployed that I think were almost a little bit deceitful in a way um, to, to, to make it feel like it was a human. And then you realized with some of those canned answers and the fact that it was typing so darn quickly that it couldn't possibly be human. Um, but, uh, and then when it, of course it couldn't understand you and it went into a loop, that was even worse. Um, <laughs> but really and truthfully, um, what I'd like you to do is take a step back and, and think in terms of this. Conversational AI is really nothing more than a conversational user interface. And we're leveraging, you know, what people know how to do here, text, you know, that people are texting on their phones all the time, or speech, you know, for interaction, rather than a GUI, right? And that's what we're all used to is point and clicking, leveraging icons, menus, and mouse pointing. <clears throat> but in reality, the conversational AI is nothing more than just a different type of user interface that doesn't require that you know, clicking and whatnot, and you're and you're you're basically chatting instead. So the fact that the computer is the one replying to you, same way in, in, with a GUI, it's giving you you know um, it, the interface is giving you cues back. Um, it has to give cues back, so therefore it it's using you know human language to do that. I don't necessarily think that um, that it has to you know emulate a human per se, but the more friendly it is and whatnot, the more people are generally to. Uh, to interact with it. So that's really kind of the reason why you get that, that human um, imposter type of, of uh, uh, definition. So what I really want to show you here is that it's really not any different than any other kind of uh, user interface that you would employ. So if I take a web page and I, and I integrate that with a ticket management system, I get a service management portal, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys have interacted with that before um, and understand that concept. <clears throat> However, if I take a chatbot, which is a conversational user interface, and integrate that with the ticket management system, uh, I actually get a service management agent, um, which is uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, it's it's functionally capable, like the service management portal, uh, but it is actually kind of a, a different, uh, a, a little bit of a different animal. And so, really and truthfully, you can use a chatbot. Um, anywhere it makes sense to, for a user to naturally communicate um, instead of doing that kind of pointing and clicking. And we'll, we'll take a look at uh, a couple of real-world examples here.